Oh, uh, it, someone said it's a fearful thing to be excommunicated from the synagogue. But it's far more serious to reject the truth and be lost forever. Now listen to this from Proverbs chapter 29 verse 25. The fear of man will prove to be a snare. Will prove to be a snare. If we fear man, that'll snare us every time. That's what will happen. Okay, now let's go to the healed man. Haven't we talked about his neighbors and about the Pharisees and about his parents, right? Now we're talking about the man who was healed. Let's get his reaction. Well, the healed man showed consistent, growing faith. Consistent, growing faith. Well, that's what he did. He showed consistent, growing faith. All the way through chapter 9, he is consistent and it's growing. His faith is growing and that's good. Well, Warren Wiersbe also stated this, people were asking the wrong question. Remember I said about that word how, H-O-W. They wanted to know the mechanical. They want, How did this guy get healed anyway? They wanted to know steps or processes. So, someone said, you better, and when you're asking how, H-O-W, you should take, well, there's H-O-W. You should take the W and move it over to first letter. Who? Instead of how, who did this? And honor him. And that's Jesus, isn't it? Now, look in verse number 11. Well, the man said, as far as I know, it's the man they call Jesus. That's who did it. Is that what it says in 11? The man they call Jesus. Well, of course, the man is still blind. He did, I mean, before he was healed, he was blind, so he'd never seen Jesus, had he? Couldn't see Jesus physically. No, no, he could hear him in identification. Um... You know, some, you know, the beauty of this man also is he wasn't intimidated by the threats of the Pharisees. He didn't get intimidated by people. Did you ever walk in a room where you felt like, what, what's it said? What's the expression? You felt like you were a fifth wheel? How many wheels does it take to run a car? How many wheels do you have to have for a car? Four. Okay, now I'll show you a picture of a three-wheel car, but that's okay. We, we, the answer is four. Thank you, Hagen. Four. Sometimes you go and you feel like you're a fifth wheel. You're the spare tire, right? And maybe the little donut they put in the trunk and they say, you can't go over 45 or 50 miles as an hour and only 50 miles total. And you better not go anymore. I see some people whizzing around. They act like they've driven on it for about four months and they're still going. <laughs> but you walk in a room sometime and did you ever have the conversation to stop? Have you been there? Sure, you, I think you have. Most of us have. And we feel like we're the fifth wheel. Now, well, they ask him again. Look in verse 17. See, in verse 11 it says, the man they call Jesus. What, does it, what did he answer in verse 17? He is a prophet. Wow, great. Now, then later, look in verses 35 through 38. Look in those. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. Now, he told them he got healed and he was giving Jesus the credit. They put him out of the synagogue. It would be horrible if somebody came in there today, or the, the authorities came in there today and took one of us out. Said, get out of the synagogue. You don't believe the right thing. Out of the church. Well... And so they put him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Now Jesus is asking this man, Do you believe in the Son of Man? And uh, who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me so that I may believe in him. Who is he? 
Jesus said, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. And the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Didn't you get excited as you read that together today? We did. Lord, I believe. And then he worshipped God. His, his faith is consistent. It's growing, isn't it? Okay. Now, well, the man had been physically and spiritually blind. But his eyes and his heart were opened up, weren't they? And they were healed. Now, why? Why? Well, he listened to the word, didn't he? Jesus is the living word. And this is the written word. He listened to the word. He obeyed it. He believed it. He experienced the grace of God. Well, let's go to number two. You'll think we'll never get to number ten if you go this slow. And takes all of this deal. Okay, let's go ahead. We'll see how far we get. We'll be fair with you on time, though. Number two. It says, A common belief in Jewish culture was that calamity or suffering was the result of some great sin. S-I-N. That was a, a common belief. Oh, brothers and sisters in Christ, we live in a fallen world, don't we? It is fallen. Good behavior is not always rewarded. Bad behavior is not always punished. Well, innocent people, sometimes innocent people, we hear reports, they suffer because they're Christian. They're innocent, but they suffer. It's a fallen world. Well, listen to a man, um, uh, he's a pastor, Bill Buchnight, and he said, you know, you ask the question, what good can come out of tragedy? What good can come out of it? Well, Jesus said that the blind man would be a living demonstration for the rest of the world. I wonder how many people have come to Christ after they heard this story. That Jesus can heal you physically, but most important, he can heal us spiritually. He can forgive sin. Well, what a heartbreak, or rather, when a heartbreak, when you've had a heartbreak, or you've had an accident, or an illness, or when death comes, let this be our question. Here's what we need to ask. Heavenly Father God, what use can you make of my bad times? That won't be easy to ask, will it? Heavenly Father God, what use can you make of the bad times I'm going through? That'd be the right question, wouldn't it? I didn't say it was easy. Well, this is Pastor Buchna. His eight-year-old son, Aaron, died of cancer. So he spoke about that. And at the church where he served, there was a young man who occasionally came to work on the, on the heating and air conditioning system. He did. He knew the family well. And after several years after Aaron died, the eight-year-old boy... This young man came to see Pastor Bugnight, and he told him, Pastor, knowing about Aaron changed my life. He said, I was living for the devil as hard as I could live. That's what I was doing, but it changed my life. He said, God, I began to gr grapple and wrestle with the questions like, what is eternal? Where can I find any real security in the world? How would I survive if my own child died or children died? How would I survive this? So he concluded that Jesus Christ was the only one, the only one in the world who could meet his deepest needs. Okay? He made a full commitment of his life to Jesus Christ. The young man did. Almost every time he came to work at the church from thereafter, he wasn't a part of that congregation, but almost every time he came, after he worked, he knocked on the door of the study or the office of Pastor Bugnight, and he told him, he said, um, Sir, I will never forget Aaron. I will never forget him. 
Pastor Book Knight said, you see, that was the one of the ways that God took what happened to Aaron and brought good into the world from what happened to him and used it for good. You see, sometimes living is very difficult. Very difficult. Some of you could tell me difficulties that I haven't experienced. Maybe I might have experienced some difficulties that you haven't. I don't know. But if, you're, if, if life breaks your heart, or if life breaks your health, or if life breaks your finances, hey, you and I can wallow around like we're stuck in mud or molasses, and we can whimper and whine and demand an explanation, but one has said no explanation will be given usually, and what we need to do by faith is take all of our hurts, take all of our brokenness, all of our broken health, all of our broken finances, and put them on the altar of God. Put them on the altar or put them at the foot of the cross, right? And give them to Him. We can't explain them, but we know who can help us. Well, as we say that, um, according to Jesus, the blindness of this man was not the result of sin of either party. Now, we have the sense enough, and I believe all of us have the sense enough to know that some suffering is the result of somebody's sin. But he said this one is not. Some suffering is the result of somebody's sin. For instance, if I smoke two packages of cigarettes a day for 20 years and I develop lung cancer, I ought not to blame the disease on God. I ought to blame the disease on me. Right? Yes. If I spoil a child by being too much indulgence and too little discipline, and then in later years he makes himself and his family miserable, I ought not to blame God. I blame myself. Yeah. If I break God's laws concerning sexual morality and then contract some terrible disease, I ought not to blame God. I ought to blame myself. Because God warned us, like in James, in the book of James, we reap what we sow. The problem comes, though, when we reap what we haven't sown. That happens sometimes, doesn't it? Someone asked the question, you know, 9-11? They said, why did a brokerage firm in, that, in those twin towers, twin towers, right? Okay, why did that particular brokerage firm um, lose a majority of its employees and other businesses lost so little? Well, back at the beginning of, these, uh, of creation, these problems were non-existent. At that time, there was no sickness, death, hatred, chaos, tragedy. The world was a paradise. But then sin entered through Adam and Eve. And sin fractured God's world right down the middle. And in the wake of sin came disease and death and man's inhumanity to man. Well, number three, you'll notice on your outline, Jesus may have purposely made the clay in order to emphasize his teaching about the Sabbath. It was to be a, a, a holy day of rest, a weekly holy day of rest, the Sabbath day, his teaching. Well, the, the Pharisees had made a, made a long list of specific do's and don'ts, do's and don'ts. Um, see, I, I believe Jesus may have made that clay and, and, and did on the Sabbath in that it's right to care for others' needs even if it means working on a day of rest. Where would we be without those people who, work in, who, who serve in a hospital today? Of all those people who are sick and they're at Carl Clinic or in another hospital or in nursing homes and there are people there caring for them, aren't there? Sure. Well, number four. Let's move right along and I'm not certain we'll be finished, but we'll stop. You don't need to know all the answers in order to share. S-H-A-R-E. S-H-A-R-E. Share Jesus Christ with others. 
the man who had been blind, he, I mean, he'd heard the same questions over and over. He didn't know how or why 